It's Transport Month this October, and part of what we'll do is delve into the subject of scholar transport safety by talking to the National Education Transport Services Secretary, that's uh, Vusi Nkunjana, who joins us now via our video link. And uh, good sir, great to have you on the program. Thanks very much indeed for making time to speak to us. You know, we're spoiled for choice about the many instances where scholar transport has sadly gone wrong. I mean, the issue in Carltonville, for example, comes to mind, where several pupils lost their lives there. As a start, what's your focus as a Scholar Transport Association this Transport Month? Uh, good morning. Um, we, the National Education Transport Services, being the coordinators of transport in the country, um, we are empowered by Gauteng Education Transport Services. Our main focus is to conscientize our members as to the importance of safety, as the to the importance of abiding by the law and making sure that our cars are roadworthy and compliance is key in the way we operate. What does compliance involve? You know, anecdotally, some people speak about how sometimes they've seen many children squashed in a particular vehicle. Um, and from my vantage point, it seems there's a loose agreement between the parents and the scholar transport provider, but of course that poses all manner of risks. Yes, you, you, you must remember, um, look, there, there, there are in scholar transport, we are divided into two. There are contracted bus services, which are paid by government, and those also are squashed. If you can look at the buses that are affairing kids are so squashed. Then there are those contracts that are between the parents and, and the operator. That's a different ball game. Now, if you look at our Land Traffic Act, which does not clearly, which does not clearly stipulate as the loading capacity as per the age of variance. So it makes it a bit difficult sometimes to import that because Whatever communication is out there is not related to the on the ground. But uh, overloading and doing things illegally, that's not what we stand for. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you say that there's regulation that isn't clear. Sometimes these vehicles are very clear about how many people you should be transport inciting, transporting inside of them. And despite that, it seems there's a completely disregard just because it's children and not adults in those cars. Yes, like I said, if, if, if you have to go to the, 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 the Land Traffic Act, which the stipulations thereof are, are, are different, because in terms of the loading capacity, it's a different debate altogether. In 2009, when Jeff Hadever was Minister of Transport, to his draft, we, 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 we argued with him to invite us when the, 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 you know, there's a compilation of, of, of policies and laws that are going to, 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 to govern transport uh, industry. Because you cannot exclude door-to-door -door operation. And yet you want to enforce the law. It, it's, it's not going to work. I think we, we have to go back to the drawing board and look at all the legislation in terms of the Land Traffic Act, in terms of the Traffic Act of 2009, so that we, we try and bridge the gap as to uh, how can we meet each other halfway or mitigate uh, those, those risky areas. Yeah. What I find in many instances is that some of the operators, the scholar transport operators, are also under pressure to meet certain targets. Um, and I wonder if you can weigh in on that as an association that oversees the sector. You know, is it time to also start reconsidering just the pressure that operators are put under, which in some instances forces them to drive over the speed limits and, as we've been discussing, forces them to overload those vehicles? Absolutely. I agree with you. I agree. We, 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 as an association or as an organization, we, 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 we encourage our members, like I said earlier, not to overload. But remember, uh, the honours lie with government. It is government responsibility to, to make sure that kids are ferried in a correct way. And government should engage all stakeholders that are involved in, in, in those sectors. So um, 
for, for me and you to debate here, it would have been nice if we debate here and have someone from the Department of Transport also uh, so that we can engage. And they must tell you the facts. Because if I can take, take you back, in 2006, the Southern government uh, funded scholar transport in Southern, right? There was an organization called Southern Education Transport Services that was formed. And we wanted to be rolled out throughout the country. That's why we are visiting all the provinces. But uh, government is not coming on board so that we, we can bridge that gap. Because you can only do that when you conscientize the people, you involve the people so that they know. Because these are bread and butter issues. And you cannot wish scholar transport away. People are, are not working. And you know the concept of Vugu Zenzele comes into play when we are dealing with these issues. Absolutely. I don't think anybody wants to wish scholar transport away. They're just hoping that it'll be much safer than it is in some instances. I hear the calls you're making for government to meet the sector halfway. But I suppose the question I can ask you is what role then do the scholar transport drivers themselves have to play? Because surely they make calls on a day-to-day -day basis which could alleviate some of this risk. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Remember... Before you become a, an operator, you are, you are also a parent. I don't think there's any parent who would want their kids to be transported in a car that is uh, not safe. They are squashed and uh, all the laws that are there governing uh, transport are broken, right? As, as an organization, we, we, we take our members to training and the majority of the operators that are involved in these incidents are people who are not affiliated to any organization and we encourage all people to to belong to associations um, you know i can tell you last week we went to petersburg to peter uh, Pit, uh, petersburg i mean sorry we went to petersburg uh, to go meet with, with with the ground forces there i mean the operators in that area only to be told by members in, 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 in Petersburg that they are not allowed to register associations. Because if you have associations that are registered, it is easy to regulate, it is easy to come with ways of controlling and making sure that people adhere to the, to the law. Absolutely. Well, hopefully we're able to get all the right people around the table rather sooner than later, at the very least, because of the uh, lives of these children, which are all at stake. Uh, Vusin Kunjana, thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. We appreciate your time.